So hello you wonderful citizens of the internet and welcome to a bit of a discussion about eating in front of ED friends and whether that's an okay thing to do, whether it can even be a helpful thing to do or whether it's really crass and disrespectful to start stuffing your face with junk food in the presence of a severely ED'd person. Now obviously I do need to insert a quick trigger warning in this video for ED content. I don't think it's a very triggery video, it's mostly focusing on harm reduction and ways to make your ED friends feel more comfortable and like harm reduced around you. But if you are kind of tottering on the verge of a relapse right now, honestly to God, I, I would say just stay the fuck away from ED content while you're in this like headspace. Like I, I would just go watch something happy right now, seriously, instead. Um, I know, that, I know, like all the drama going on with Eugenia Cunha, blah, 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 it's got to be a hell of a time to be tottering on the edge of a relapse. So I ugh, go, go somewhere else. That is an order. <laughs> Um, so for everyone else, here comes the video. Because the views seem to be varying wildly right now, with Eugenia Cooney staying with Jeffree Star, the clip of Jeffree Star eating this big ice cream thing, and Eugenia sitting there, and there are so many people up in arms saying, oh, disrespectful, disgusting. I don't want to make this a Jeffree Star and Eugenia Cooney video. There are so many people making that video. I have no interest in making it personally, other than to say, when I first heard she was going away to, to Wyoming, um... I did think, will this actually be the thing that turns things around for her? Going on vacation can be about the best thing for an ED person, I think, for, for any person who's stuck in a rut of repetition and a limited, disordered life. But the more clips I'm seeing, the more I'm convinced that like, I, 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 don't, I don't know what this what this thing between them is and I don't like the way he comes off with her on on live streams the way he just talks over her spits out random love bomby comments while completely ignoring it's very weird but anyway moving on from that to the actual subject of this video eating in front of ed friends and whether that is an okay thing to do or whether as like say people are blowing up on the internet and say this is disgusting look at him just stuffing his face in front of you Julia Blair um so for me personally, I would say when I was really at my sickest, people eating around me was some of the most helpful thing they could do. I think if you're going to completely stop eating around ED friends and keep, you know, keep the food away from them because you're so afraid of offending them or triggering them or whatever, Honestly, that, that verges on not just enabling, but actually doing active harm. Like, it makes me think of the fact that when my mom first found out I was throwing my sandwiches away for lunch at school, she stopped making me sandwiches and just sent me to school with no lunch. And, like, obviously food waste is bad, no one wants food waste, but then I had no lunch. There was no point at which I could think during school, you know what, I'm going to try today, I'm actually going to eat because I couldn't, because she, she'd taken all my sandwiches away. <laughs> it wasn't helpful. And I feel like, you know, the more you remove food from around anorexic people, like any potential for change is also going out the window with the food. And I would say if you've got someone ED'd who is coming around and there's going to be like a food type situation or they're coming around for a long time, you're probably going to need to eat at some point in that time. I would say probably the kindest thing you can do is forewarn them that there's going to be a meal or whatever, but before they can freak out and cancel, get in there that, look, if you want to bring whatever food you are comfortable eating, and even if you want to eat it in another room, that's fine. If you want to just bring whatever your safe food is today, like bring that and be a part of the meal, be a part of the proceedings. Um, obviously, like some people can say, that's enabling too, you're you know, blah, blah, blah. blah. I think whatever you can get them to eat is probably a good thing. And if you can get them to be a part of social things, that is a hugely great thing for someone with such an isolating disorder. Like for me, the example that springs to mind with all of this really, uh, like two things, one of them being when I was at my lowest weight in Italy, um, we were able to get these massive green salads. And it was the first time in, like I don't even know how long, that I'd been able to share a family meal with my family and be there at the table with them. And I had forgotten how, oh, it's quite emotional. <laughs> I'd forgotten how, um, just how warm it feels to be with people eating and how much people share and how lovely it is to be a part of things and feel a part of things. Because that whole 
that whole vacation, I felt like an alien, just drifting through, vibrating on a different speed to everyone else. Because you, you know, your brain is so starved and so slowed down, and everyone else is doing all these activities, and you don't have the energy to. So you, and you just feel so depressed and so isolated. And meal times were the one time I didn't feel that. I actually felt a part of things because I had my safe food that I could eat, and people didn't drop too many mocking comments about like the fact they were there with you know mounds of spaghetti and pizzas and stuff and I was there with my salad um people were generally pretty chill about it and it was really nice to be a part of things similarly I had a friend who again while I was still quite strongly ED'd um he would let me bring whatever safe foods around to his house and be as weird as I liked with them. And no matter how disgusting, because honestly, anorexic safe foods look disgusting. <laughs> they, they are some of the weirdest shit you will ever see a person eat. And he never said a cruel word about any of it. Um, whether I was, you know, fucking about with horrible lumpy, like cream cheese sauces and stuff, whether I was toasting marshmallows for an hour over a candle, he never said anything bad about it. And so I got to be a part of things and I didn't feel weird. I didn't feel, you know, because I know it's tempting to like, just make a bit of a jokey cut because obviously things get tense you know when you're around someone you know is anorexic and there's food and it gets a bit tense and sometimes your coping mechanism is comedy and to just just say god that looks disgusting or something like zip it in in this particular instance please try to zip it because you feel weird enough already you know you like you they are aware that their food looks weird disgusting and icky um, they don't need any more weirdness pushing on them about their food and their ED. So if you can just get them to eat something and be a part of proceedings and feel like a part of proceedings, that's great. And you may even find that, um, you know, if, if you want to every now and then say, oh, do you want to try a bit of this? Do you want to try a bit of that? They may actually, if they if you can get them comfortable enough with no like joking about how disgusting their food looks, no like really forceful pushing the food on them, no staring at them while they're eating, no commenting, oh, wow, it's good to see you eating, all of that gone. If you can make it a safe enough space for them, they may actually feel like, wow, I am a part of things. I'd like to be more of a part of things. I'm going to try some of this food that people are eating. I'd like to be more normal. Because that is a big thing. When you've been eating for like a number of years, you almost start to like fetishize and romanticize being normal. Um, I remember when Subway first came to the UK, getting like this this veggie delight. And I, I felt so cool and so normal with my like takeout food that I was eating in front of the computer with like wrappers like strewn everywhere. It, it was like it was like being a genuinely like relaxed, normal college kid. And I felt so cool. And it was so sad. But um, yeah. So I would say that this advice, though, largely goes for anorexic people. If you're talking about an eating disorder like ARFID or something, so avoidant restrictive food intake disorder, which is something that mostly neurodivergent people had, have, and it's not a weight loss disorder. It's not about wanting to lose weight. It's more about the sensory issues around eating. So it could be the, the look of food, the smell of food, the texture of food, like fearing choking, fearing throwing up. Like the, There can be a whole range of symptoms and it's, it's the food itself that is the fear item and the eating that grosses them out or makes them afraid. And so they're not trying to starve themselves, but they just find they can't physically eat. People who have this thing, and I haven't, I don't think I've ever made a video about ARFID actually, um, but people who have this, obviously that that's going to be a bit different with you eating around them because it may be that you're eating their fear foods and for some of them it's going to be look I, I don't care who else eats it i just can't eat it myself but for some people and probably quite a lot of them i would think it's going to be like yeah i don't want to be i don't want to smell that i don't want to see that i don't want to hear that um so if you've got someone who's got something like that i would say try and have a bit of a discussion with them about like what foods do you really want me to just never eat in your presence um and again some people would be like yeah but that's enabling that's playing into their disorder like this this is this is uh when you you know if you're eating something or someone is eating something that literally you have this huge emetophobic response to um and it's going to give you like a panic attack or a meltdown to be in the room with someone eating that food like i don't think that is enabling to take that food away from them. i think that is just basic politeness and sanity um and if you know if you have a number of ed friends i would say try and have kind of the conver the conversation with them 
like one on one each of them rather than in a group where you're going to get like a group consensus and people are going to be compromising and staying uncomfortable if you can get them one on one and just be like look what 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 can i do to to generally make things as easy as possible for you around food um you know whether that's they want to eat in a different room when they're with you or they they want to eat with the tv on and you're like sitting here they're sitting behind so you can't see them eating that was something I did for a while was sitting like way at the back of the room where no one could be like watching me while I was doing things. <laughs> so long as I was at the back of the room and no one could see me, it was fine. Um, so that there's probably going to be some weirdisms. If you're willing to pander to, to a few little weirdisms, I think it can just be good. As I say, if you can get these people who are very, very isolated out socializing, that is a win. Um, if you can get them eating anything at all, that is a win. And the more you can draw them into normality, big win. Um, however, we've got to kind of jump onto another category of ET here and talk about the bulimic folks, because that's a whole nother category again of what, what does one do when eating around bulimic folks? Um, because you're going to get some who keep probably people in the opening stages of bulimia mostly who don't engage in bulimic behaviors anywhere but in their house and while they're out with you they may just restrict a little bit they may eat normally they may not eat at all like it's a whole spectrum um but then you've got people who've been in their disorder for like usually a lot longer um and sometimes they will become comfortable with like bp and binge purging in restaurants and at other people's houses and that was kind of the level that I got to towards the end of when I was bulimic. Um, I would go out to restaurants with friends. Like, sad to say, it was it's literally the one time I've enjoyed going out to restaurants with people really. Mm, occasionally there have been restaurants I've liked going to, but I, do, I don't really like restaurants. It's like there's too many smells and too many intense everything and the calories and the food and the weird stomach feelings and blah, blah, blah. um whereas if once it became like my drug and like food and binging was my drug oh i was all about going to restaurants if you were going to a restaurant i was up for coming um so if you've got someone like that um i would say all you can really do is try to limit the harm because you're probably not going to be able to stop them at this point um so if you can limit the harm i would say do not let them come with you to like an all you can eat buffet or something because if they're going to a normal restaurant with you at least they're hopefully only going to be purging once or twice whereas if they're going to an all you can eat buffet the temptation is there it's there and you can keep going and going and going and you can really do yourself some harm um so i, I would say try and try and rule out restaurants where they can do that particularly if you've witnessed that this is what they do do in these restaurants um equally take take it as kind kind of a compliment because they're clearly very comfortable in your company um that that could mean that maybe your some of your behaviors are enabling them but it could also just mean that they regard you as a really good friend and they feel comfortable around you and when they do decide to seek help you will probably be one of the first people they come to and that's a privileged position to be in so um there's that but um yeah i would say while you're at the table with them and they're doing this if you if I, oh it's a whole mind game it is a, it is a crazy crazy mind game but i would say if you are someone who is fairly slim like it's it's kind of weird um ed logic is is weird it's a mental illness it is a madness you know but if you're someone who is fairly slim and you're eating with them if you don't have an ed yourself and you are able to eat something a little bit higher calorie and obviously not go purge it that might be encouraging to them to be able to look at you and kind of go, okay, like I've got this slim friend and look, they are, they are eating like this great big hamburger or whatever. They're not doing this and it's not killing them. Um, and just, I've read so many studies about psychologically what eating across the table from people behaving in certain ways does to you. Um, and apparently eating opposite a slim person who is eating quite well tends to encourage other people to kind of relax around food too um otherwise if that is not your situation be that like weight wise or you don't want to engage in this whole kind of crazy game or you just don't want to eat that kind of thing or you're a bit ed yourself um 
I, I, I don't know what to say really other than just maybe trying to find something on the menu that is like somewhere in, in a comfortable middle ground that it's got, you know, it's fairly, fairly healthy, fairly low calorie, but it's, it's like, it's nice. It looks like a nice, enjoyable restaurant meal. Um, you know, and maybe they can kind of see that and think, oh, well, next time I go, potentially I could eat like a nice thing that might be within something I could consider safe. And I might not have to go and rush off to the bathroom and do the whole horrible thing, which is, is like legitimately is no fun to do in a restaurant store. No fun to do anywhere. But in a restaurant store, when you're worried about all the people clunking around and hearing you and it's, it's ugh, it is it is no fun. Um, so, if you know, but it is a tough one. It is like bulimia is probably the hardest one to get around with food because you can push them into so many different things. Like you don't want to push them into eating nothing at all because you've maybe said something or you've said too much and you've embarrassed them and now they've, they're just not going to eat around you at all. Like you don't want to push them into that. But equally, you, you don't want to like trigger them to binge if they're in a bit of a binge free streak. It's, it's like serious dancing on eggshells situation. I feel like being around bulimic people food wise, you know, mostly speaking as having been the bulimic person myself, um, and you, you know, bulimic people do, do very hugely as to whether their binges are planned or whether they go to the restaurant with the best of intentions and then it just panic sets in and they go do their thing. Um, so it's, it's, yeah, it's hard to speak on that one. Again, I would say probably if you're, if you're in that kind of comfort zone with your friend that you can have a conversation with them and try, you know, try and keep it fairly lighthearted and not too heavy. What can I do to try and minimize the harm when we go out kind of thing, I guess would be the situation there. Um, but yeah, as far as, as far as like randomly eating around ED people, um, unless they have specifically said to you or, you know, you've noticed from their behavior that it wigs them out in some kind of way, or they just really don't like it. Um, in general, particularly again, speaking about anorexic people, in general, anorexic people actually get kind of fixated on food. Not all of them, but quite a large percentage. Because if you're if you're not eating, if you're not putting those calories in yourself and you are in a severe state of starvation, even if you're not at a low weight, you can be in a severe state of starvation. And you tend to like food just fills your brain. And becomes a huge obsession you know you, you start watching cooking channels all day long um you start looking at pictures of food porn and stuff like that you you get fixated on it because your body's not taking it in and this will happen to anyone who starves themselves that much if you look up the minnesota starvation experiment all the men were like fixated on food all the time um so actually most anorexic people's reaction i think to someone else eating around them is you're probably just going to get some creepy stares because you're eating and that is the thing they're the most fixated on. I always wanted to know how things tasted. I think this is quite common actually for anorexic people. Um, and I remember like, again, going back to the vacation in Italy, you know, people would be eating things and I would always be like, what's that like? Like, what, what's that bit like? And some people get really pushy and they're like, take a bite of that <laughs> with that and tell me what it tastes like and things. Um, it, it can get weird. It can get weird eating with an anorexic person, you know, and then they'd always be like, oh, do you want some? You know, because I'd be so interested in their food. They'd be like, you can try some if you want. Ah, no, um, I just I just want to hear you talk about it. It's, it's creepy. We're, we're, we, we can be a bit creepy. Um, but uh, no, I, I would say like, I don't think someone eating around an anorexic person is, is usually like a, a sign of disrespect or likely to make them worse in any kind of way. Um, oh, I mean, I don't know if I should even say this, to be honest. The only, this is really fucked up, yo, but this is, this is ED logic, okay? The only type of situation I could see where a random friend eating random junk food in front of an anorexic could make them worse would be if that random friend was heavily overweight themselves because to an anorexic mind that is going to compound the fear of food equals makes you fat um so that that's the fucked up logic um so if you know if you're someone who like jeffree star is is fairly slim i would say an anorexic person with the fucked up logic they have they're probably not going to be 
like, oh, food equals fat, because, you know, he's not a fat guy. Um, yeah, yeah, it's it's kind of icky. Some of the logic is kind of icky, but like, say, it's a mental illness. It is a madness. And it's such a difficult to explain madness because it overlaps with so much, like, normal logic. You know, we, we are all a little bit weird about food and weight and, you know, increasingly more so these days with all the gym bros and no one seems to be normal about food anymore at all. Um, you know, people living on Huel supplements and it, there's, there's just so many ways to be weird about food lately. So we're, we're all a bit weird. So we, we think we can, like, rationalise and understand when someone is ED'd because a lot of their logic is just like gym bro or dieter logic or, or you know, clean eating logic, but they're actually completely mad. And um, I don't know how else to put it. Um, you are you are dealing with someone who is to some degree kind of psychotic around food and the ideas of food and the, the logic that is in their head is is kind of psychotic. And that is, yeah, it's, it's hard to understand. It's hard to explain because you for, for every person, the crossover and where the crossover point between normal diet thoughts and really fucked up thoughts the crossover comes at so many different points in so many different places it's impossible to explain but um yeah this is this is now quite long quite tangential um but hopefully that covers kind of the main eds and maybe some of their reactions to food and how you can do your bit for harm reduction for them because I, I have said this before but one of the most helpful things for me in recovery was kind of being drawn into a group of friends who like um were were completely normal around food and were pushing being normal around food on me in quite a pushy way like they would kind of make some jokes at my expense but it was never mean it was always just encouraging it was just kind of like come on come and join the fun like don't be boring come and join the fun um unfortunately this this kind of overlapped at a point where i i pushed myself into somewhat recovery but I was still very, very, very rigid about a lot of stuff. And then suddenly I was surrounded by these people and they made like normal eating and normal food seem so fun. And I wanted to be part of the cool kids club and I, I wanted to be able to drink and not worry about the calories and eat pizza and not worry about the calories. And um, so that helped. And, you know, the fact that the fact that we were always half drunk half the time, that, that helped too, which obviously could have led instantaneously to a switch from um, eating disorders to alcoholism, which actually took me considerably more years before I eventually pretty much inevitably found alcoholism and did did my time with that but um yeah no it was, it was really helpful having friends who were just willing to eat around me and who who didn't didn't really tolerate my shit like they, they would let me eat my safe foods but I knew I was like in for a night of being ribbed about them and how boring it looked and how boring it must have tasted and like mm, wouldn't you rather have some of this and if I'd been like really sick at that point and really like completely against recovery, I probably would have just bailed on the friendship group completely. Like I, I wouldn't have tolerated that. They, they would have been battling against the thing that I needed the most in the world. And it was like, no, I'm not, I'm just not going to hang out with you because it's too hard. Um, so I think you have to really assess where your friend is at in terms of recovery, that if they're really like, they, they have no, ability right now to even partially recover this is when you really do need to have the conversation with them you really need to make sure they've got their safe foods with them um make as safe a space as possible for them i always think you know if you can create this this much of a safe space eventually they may start trying some of your food and things like this and you might be able to kind of winkle them into recovery a little bit or just into loosening up their rules a little bit um and if you've got someone who is a little bit further into recovery then you know, being around the chaos of people having big pizza parties and stuff like that can actually be really helpful and can draw them out of that rigidity completely. Um, but it, yeah, it's it's different for everyone. It's different for every different ED. Um, the timing is huge. The the relationship you have with that friend is is another factor. Like it's it's a big fucking complicated subject. But uh, hopefully some of these things kind of make some sense and may be helpful. I don't know. But uh, anyway, if you have experience with any of this stuff, be that from the side of the friend or the ED person or both, 
please leave your experiences below particularly if you suffer from an ed that i haven't touched on here that would be interesting to hear about if there were any things that your friends did that were particularly helpful or unhelpful to you in recovery or ed life um leave them below like let's widen the discussion outside of just shit that i can tell you and i can give you because eds are such tangly complex multi-layered things that, that there is just no way that one person with one person's experiences can cover it all perfectly like there's there's always going to be like so much other shit to say so drop your stuff in the box below and i am going to shut up now so uh, thank you for listening to me waffle and i will see you soon for now bye bye <laughs>